All right, so today what we're gonna do is work towards giving the definition, the formal definition of an ordinal, um, which again is gonna be some type of canonical way of representing all the ways you can well order sets. Uh, that's what the ordinals are going to do for us. But before we do that, we need one kind of more definition. We need to give the definition of what's called a transitive set. So for transitivity, transitivity. What's the definition? Well, we're given some set A, so A is a set. A is transitive if the following is true. So A is transitive um, if the following holds. So if and only if. Uh, there are a few different ways of expressing this, but one of them is for every single Y in A, for every single x and y, it's the case that um, x is an element of A. So this is maybe one definition. So I'm going to maybe write down a few of them. They're all equivalent to each other. So this is one definition. Another one would be something like uh, for all x and y, if it's the case that x is an element of y and y is an element of A, well then it has to be the case that x is an element of A. And expressing this, uh, expressing this definition in, in the second condition, hopefully makes it clear why this is why we're using the, uh, the the term transitive, right? If x is an element of y and y is an element of a, well, we're thinking about epsilon, the membership relation, as a relation that's transitive. And then the third one, uh, the third equivalent definition would be well, for every single y that's in a, it would actually be the case that y is a subset. Okay, so all three of these things are equivalent to each other. And just to think about this last one, what does this mean? This would mean that every element of Y is an element of A. But that's exactly what this condition says. So they all say the same thing. When I solved this one for the first time, this third, uh, this third equivalent definition, I thought it was a little bit strange. But I really liked seeing this one. Like, why would we call it transitive? Well, it's because the epsilon membership, we're viewing kind of the membership relation as a transitive relation. Okay, if we want to think about a picture, we can think about maybe something like this. So maybe here's our, uh, here's a circle. This is our set A. And we have some point Y. Well, um, if it's the case that Y has some element X, well, then it's also going to be a dot inside of our big blob representing all the elements of A. But this actually keeps on going, right? Um, what it implies is, well, um, let's say that we have, let's say we, here's another blob representing our set A. Well, it could be that it has some element Z. The Z contains some, uh, contain, contain some element Y. And then by, since a, if we're assuming that A is transitive, it would be that Y is a dot. But if Y has some element X, it would also be that um, by, for the, by the, but the same reasoning would also be that x is a dot as well. So one of the uh, corollaries or note, if, if it's the case, say, that x is an element of y is an element of z, which is an element of a, then it would have to be the case that x is an element of a. And this keeps on going. Now, one thing that this is not saying, this is not saying so maybe another note. If A is transitive and we have this condition, well, we get that X is an A. It's not necessarily the case. So not necessarily the case. Uh, not necessarily true. That X is an element of Z. So we won't know that kind of, that, that's not, in a lot of cases, so with ordinals, we're going to know something like this. Um, but just by using this definition of transitive, we don't have we don't have this condition. Maybe to think about an example, maybe we'll first kind of list out some examples of just transitive sets. So, what is an example of a transitive set? The empty set is a, an example of a transitive set. So, empty set is a transitive set is transitive. 
And one way to see this is from this third condition, right? Well, there are no elements of the empty set. So vacuously, all of its elements are subsets of the empty set. Um, another one would be if we take every natural number, so for every n in omega, remember, omega is our definition, is kind of our set theoretic representation of the natural numbers. This formally was defined as the smallest inductive set, so the minimal inductive set, and its elements were called natural numbers. Um, these things are all transitive, so, so n is transitive. And depending on how formal you'd want to be, you have to check this. But um, uh, for us, we're just going to maybe take it for granted. But if we had to give some kind of sentence reason for why it's the case, we could say something like, well, what is the ordering? So, so note, the ordering that we gave on the natural numbers um, was this. So we said that n was less than m. This is true if and only if n was an element n was an element of, of m. So this is the definition that we gave of the ordering of the natural numbers. And so as it turns out, what happened was that all of the natural numbers, say n, that was equal to the set of all natural numbers that came before it. This relation implies this statement. Um, well, what do we know about this? Actually, what, what do we want to check? We want to show that every natural number is transitive. So we can do this by, well, if we take an element, maybe I want to write it backwards. I want to write it the other way. Let me say something like this. So I'm going to say m is less than n if and only if m is an element of n. So what we can say is, well, um, for every single m in n, Right? We want to show that m is a subset of n. Well, why is this the case? m is going to be all the set of all natural numbers that came before it. But that's going to be a subset of all of uh, these natural numbers. Exactly because um, m and m is exactly because m is less than n. We, we get this. But what is this equal to? This is equal to n. So in other words, if we just argue that m is a subset of n. But that's exactly what it means by this third condition for a set to be transitive. So all of the natural numbers end up being transitive. And this third, uh, the third thing is actually the set omega is also transitive as well. So omega is transitive as well. Omega is transitive as well. And we'll actually give, we're going to prove some closures, the properties about transitive sets first. But we'll maybe give a more formal argument for why this is the case. So maybe to be discussed, to be uh, proven. Okay, and, and then maybe to go up, go back up to here. So this note, it's maybe not necessarily the case that if we have this relation, then this ends up being true. I think one example that works is if you have the set containing the empty set, and then the set containing the empty set, and then the set containing the set containing the empty set. I think this is going to be uh, this set A, if we call this set A, I think this is going to be transitive. Well, how do we check this? We need to just check that all of its elements are subsets of A. Well, the, the first case would be, right, that, well, the empty set, you know, these are different color than green, but the, we need to check that the empty set, well, that's a subset of A, so that's good. Um, well, what about this one? Is the set containing the empty set a subset of A? Well, yes. Well, because the empty set is an element of A. So this is this is true. And then what about this last one? Um, the set containing the set containing the empty set. Is this a subset of A? Well, yes. Um, why? Well, this set has one element. It is the set containing the empty set. And that appears right here. Right. So it is a subset of A as well. So A is transitive. But what's the case? Um, well, we have that the empty set. Um, this is an element of the set containing the empty set, which is itself an element of the set containing the set containing the empty set. But it's not the case that the empty set is an element of the set containing the set containing the empty set. So that's, what is this? This is just an example that justifies this note up here. 
So just if you're curious. Um, but what it does say, it's kind of, so being transitive means you're kind of transitive for this big A, right? But maybe for not the elements themselves. All right, so let's try some closure properties. Let's prove some closure properties. Closure properties. Um, the first closure property, I'm gonna call this lemma one, is that if A is transitive, so if A is transitive, then so is A union the second containing A. And maybe before we give a proof of this, this is maybe a more formal way of, justif uh, of justifying this statement right here, right? What does it mean to add one? What's plus one for the natural numbers in our, in, in, for set theory? Well, that's exactly this operation. So N plus one is exactly N union the set containing N. And so since the empty set is transitive, we'll follow from this lemma by induction that all of the natural numbers are transitive as well. So how, how do, what's the proof of this? So we wanna prove that A union the set containing A is transitive. And well, one way to do this is argue that every element is a subset. So fix, so what's the proof? Fix some, maybe Y, fix some Y that's in A union, the set containing A. And well, there are two options, right? Either it's the case that Y is in A, but since A is transitive, it has to be the case that, well, Y is a subset of A. But A is a subset of A union, the set containing A. But that's what we wanted to show, right? We wanted to show that every element of A union, the set containing A, is actually a subset of A union, the set containing A. So this is what we wanted to show. So we're good in that case. Well, what's the other option? Well, the other option is that actually A, uh, Y is equal to A. And well, what do we need to show? We'd wanna show that every element of this set is a subset of it. Well then, um, y is equal to a, which is a subset of a union the set containing a, which is also exactly what we wanted to show. So what did we just prove? We just proved that if we have a transitive set and we take kind of, we add one to it. So we, we take that set and then include the set a itself. Well, we also get a transitive set. Um, What's another closure property? Is that if we have a transitive set, we can actually take the power set of a transitive set and get something that's also transitive. A lemma two is that if A is transitive, well then so is uh, the power set of A. And what's the proof of this? Well, let let Y be in the power set of A. And what do we need to argue? So what's our goal? Our goal is to show that Y is a subset of the power set of A. Right, that's what we'd wanna show in order to argue that the power set of A is transitive. Well, towards that end, well, let's fix an element in Y and argue that it's actually in the power set of A. So fix, fix some X that's in Y, right? Cause we're trying to show this state, we're gonna, we're gonna try to show that this statement is true. Well, if Y is an element of the power set of A, what do we know? We know that Y is a subset of A. So that follows from this assumption that Y is in the power set of A, but X is in Y and Y is the subset of A. So it follows then that X is an element of A as well. So um, X is an element of A. But what do we know about A? A is transitive. 
And so in particular, it follows that x is a subset of a. So since a is transitive, is transitive, we have that x is a subset of a. But being a subset of a is the same thing as being an element of the power set of a. But this is what we wanted to show. So I'm going to, so, but this is what, this is kind of what we wanted to show. Why is this what we wanted to show? Where well, our goal is to show that y is a subset of the power set of a. And we just argue that every element of y is actually in the power set of a. So by definition, it's a subset of the power set of a. And then the last thing that we can do, one last closure property. One last closure property is that if we have a, maybe we'll call it big curly F. So big curly F is a family, um, is a family of transitive sets, of transitive sets. So by family, we just mean it's a set, all of whose elements are transitive sets. Well, then if you take the union of this big family, you also get a transitive set. So then this union is also a transitive set, is a transitive set. And what's the proof of this? Well, um, we can kind of proceed like before. So fix some y that's in that's in uh, the union of curly F. And what's our goal? Our goal is to show something like that Y is a subset of, Y is a subset of the union of curly F. So how can we do this? Well, we can fix some X that's in Y. And so how can we like, well, maybe we'll follow our nose a little bit. What does it mean to be in the union of curly F? Well, by definition, we know that there is some set A that's in F, so that Y is an element of A, right? Remember, if we have a big collection of sets, right? A big curly F is a family of sets. This big, this union of F is the union of all of the elements of F. And so in this case, what it means is that, well, if y is in this thing, there's some element of curly F so that y is an A. And so what do we know? Well, by our assumption, F is a family of transitive sets. So it implies that A is transitive. So A is transitive. So this is transitive. So in particular, what we know is that, so y has to be a subset of A. Right, because A is transitive. And well, we haven't used this assumption yet, and it looks like we can use it right now. If X is an element of Y and Y is a subset of A, it follows that X is an element of A. So X is, a, X is an element of A. And well, I, I, I guess we could also say that X is gonna be a subset of A. We could do that as well. But then I think we actually might be going too far. I think this is actually all we need, right? So therefore, x is an element of the union of curly f. Why? Well, there is an a in f, so that x is an a, right? It's it's also in it's it's in the same a that y is in. But that's what we wanted to show. Uh, we just argue that if we took an element of of y, we just argue that it's actually also in the union of curly f. And so that's the, I guess, the proof of our third closure property. Okay, so maybe we'll stop there. Um, in the next video, I think what we'll do is just maybe give a more formal argument for why omega is transitive. And then, um, and then we'll give the definition, we'll, we'll, we'll give the definition of an ordinal.